thought that we would do us a uh, Swiss steak for supper tonight. And I uh, wanted to tell you about it and let's get it going. You are going to need one and a half to two pounds, and I generally get two pounds of a uh, round steak. And you see how it is here, I've not cut it up yet. You're gonna need flour for dredging, you know, quarter, quarter cup, it ain't gonna take a lot. Uh, salt and pepper, oil to, to fry your meat in. You're gonna need one can of whole tomatoes, one and a half cups of beef broth. You're gonna need one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and one and a half teaspoons of tomato paste, one teaspoon of paprika, two teaspoons of uh, garlic, and if you want more, go ahead. I mean, you know. Uh, you want one pound of um, sliced uh, mushrooms, and I just wanna have, actually, believe it or not, the at Kroger, the sliced ones were cheaper than the whole ones. And you're gonna need one cup of onion and one half cup of celery. And I know that sounds like a lot, but a lot of this stuff you're already going to have, you know, have around your house. So, uh, let's get this thing together. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, get my meat sliced and get it. Oh, yeah, and you're going to need a, a, a big um, skillet. It don't have to be iron. It has to be something though, that, that you trust that can stay in the heat in the oven because this is going to transfer from the stove to the oven. Okay. Let's get this meat cut up here, guys. Yes, my hands are clean. Well, um, I started to say, well, just shut it down so you don't have to live through all this, but, uh, I'm not saying you guys a day or two, baby, I miss ya. <laughs> I'm just going to try to kind of figure out what would be a portion based on the amount of people that we have. So, and this is a tough cut of meat. And there's not a thing in the world out that you can do about it except for make a wonderful meal like this out of it and cook it for a good long time. And uh, right here in just a second, I, I forgot to get me something to, uh, a bowl or something to put my um, flour in. I wasn't using my noggin. Let me rinse my hands off real fast. And uh, I'll grab me something to uh, do that with and get that meat on and let it be doing its thing. I need to get my burner on. And you can use olive oil if you want to, but now I like oil that burn just a little bit hotter than olive oil because I really want to sear these steaks good. There's no measurement on oil, just whatever you think you're going to need in your size skillet. Let me uh, find any little thing that's perfect right here. Put some flour in and get this uh, meat dredged in. Here. Well, I wasn't ready at all. <laughs> I'm never ready. When I think I'm ready, yeah, you can forget. Alrighty. I don't need no big bunch, I don't believe. But this is going to create your gravy later in your dish. So, I mean... Don't be real stingy with it. It needs to be hot. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cut off and uh, I'm gonna dredge it and let this heat up real big and get the meat in there and then uh, we'll come back and we'll do some vegetables and I'll show you what we're doing. Thank you. I finally got my uh, uh, skillet up to temperature and I'm gonna you see here we got it good and hot popping. It ain't popping hot, but it's, it's definitely sizzling hot. I'd like for it to be popping hot. And I'm going to get this meat browned real good. And then I will start on those vegetables. 
I don't believe all this meat's going to fit in that one skillet. Going to have to do it. And this is the big skillet. Going to have to do it one batch at a time, looks like. So, because we don't want this to sweat. We want this to fry. All right, then. We'll be frying and still got uh, one, two, three good-sized pieces to go. And we'll be back, guys. Thank you. Okay, we're back, guys. I wanted to show you the uh, meat here is um, doing it frying. And you see I salted and peppered it. And we want it real good and brown on, on both sides. Maybe, uh, you know, four or five minutes or a little bit more on each side. Get it good and brown. That's what makes it so beautiful. And then... Uh, I'll work on the rest of it here in just a moment. Okay, thank you. Last of my meat up, guys. Is that not beautiful? Look at that. Look at all those brown, gorgeous bits in that skillet. And the skillet, I'm going to push it back here because I don't want it to burn up within an inch of its life because that'll, st oh, that'll stay hot. And I'm going to get my celery cut up and get this uh, get these washed I'm going to set this meat to the side just wherever I can out of the way for now because I've got a pretty good size mess going on and I wanted to show you all that um, whenever uh, and this is for new cooks that might not know whenever you're working with celery and you will at Christmas, Thanksgiving, stuff like that. Celery stringy. See that? And you don't want that in your dish. So just kind of peel your celery a little dab. You just, uh, you can feel it coming off. And you, if you miss some, it's all right. It, it ain't the biggest deal in the world. But it's kind of like running across strings and green beans. Uh, you don't really want to. Cause that stuff's not edible, I just tell you. And it just, there it is in your dish, kind of making a bad mess. All right then, and I'm just going to cut them uniform in size for the, for the most part. And I need a half a, yeah, half a cup of the celery. And um, I need a whole cup of the onion. And I'm not going to make you stand here and watch me do all this cutting. Because I know it, it aggravates you all. See there, I missed some. Look there, big old some, some. And uh, get my... And I'm going to wash these. Now, they've probably been washed already. And I know you're just supposed to wipe them off and dust them off. But now, I'm going to wash them. And I'm sorry for uh, mushroom enthusiasts. But I'm washing my mushrooms, y'all. I've got to do it. <laughs> I'll see y'all back here in a few minutes. and get all this cut up. Thank you. Hey, guys. I was bringing you back. Now, I'm about to burn my skillet. I'm adding some more oil. Just uh, whatever suits me there. And because now I'm going to uh, fry my. Well, it ain't that hot. It act like it was going to die, but it ain't that hot. I'm going to add my celery and my onions. You see my meat here ready to go back in the dish. And this is half a cup of, uh, of um, celery, give or take. I'm sure there's more. A cup of onion, give or take. I, I tend to uh, add a little bit more of everything based on how many people I'm going to have and how hungry we are and stuff like that. And I want these to fry down some. And then uh, I'll add my, after these fried down some, I'll add my mushrooms. I'm going to add a little bit of a uh, of the beef broth all in all you're going to use about a cup and a half and after these get cooked down some then i'll bring you back and we'll get the mushrooms in there and then uh we'll get on with our dish thank you hey guys i thought i would show you it's cooking down real good right here and it's got all them bits out uh i can feel warm here yonder in there but there won't be any left stuck honey when it's done. It's already, oh, it's, I wish you could smell it. 
but it's time to add these mushrooms in here and it's a pound it looks like a lot more but it's not and you want to get them in there and let them cook down too and then uh, after they cook down some where we can manage this then we'll come back and we'll get our other stuff in it and get our meat in it and get on with it thank you guys we'll be back in a minute Hey you guys, here is what our onions and celery and our pound of mushrooms looks like. Is that not gorgeous? And it's cooking, it's cooking down real well. And now this, uh, we're going to add our other stuff. And this is a uh, 14 and a half ounce can of whole, whole tomatoes. And we're going to get them in there. And we need... Let me chop these up just a little dab before I add some more food to cool it down some. But I tell you what, iron skillet ain't fooling around when they get hot. They do some heat conducting. And then, I'm sorry guys. Now, we need one and a half teaspoons of the tomato paste and, uh, I ain't going to do no specific perfect measuring. It's going to be delicious. And let's get us a half in there. Get that wallered around some. <laughs> and i tell you what you're talking about. Good. This, this dish is spectacular, actually. It really is. And uh, we need a I think I've got some paprika open. I hate to open it. I got it. I can act the Congress find it. It ain't worth the trouble. We're going to open one, guys. <laughs> and I'd hate to be trying to get a... anything extra going on in Congress right now. There's a lot going on. I'm pretty sure my paprika would have to take a, a back seat to something much more important. Get it open. All right, I got that right, that right, that right, that right. I got it. Whoo, Lord of mercy. <laughs> All right, you want a teaspoon of paprika. Of course, I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure up my teaspoon. That looks good to me right there. Ooh, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna turn this down side. Sure don't want it to burn. We got too much involved in it now. Too much work. Well, so I could just eat it right now and it's not even ready. Trying to take them mushrooms and wash that paprika out of that spoon. And it's not even working with me. Alright, and what we need now, we need a, oh yeah, we need our uh, garlic. And I have found that this garlic right here, spice, oh, Lord of mercy, that smells good. It's the best stuff there was. There's no sense me staying around chopping up garlic if I don't have to. And you want two teaspoons or whatever your family likes. Here's how that, I mean, don't put like five big heaping spoons or something because that's all you're going to have when you're done. Your dish won't taste right. You need a tablespoon of Worcestershire. Oh yeah, of course I do it with the round hand. Well, there we go. Worcestershire in there, and uh, we get it all stirred up together, mixed up. Then I'm gonna get my meat in it, and it'll be time for it to go in the oven. And it goes in the oven for two and a half to three hours. You want that meat to just get, ah, oh, so tender, it just falls apart. Just take a bite, it's like biting butter. So, uh, let me get this in here. And we'll get it in the oven, honey. I probably, Chopped in might just a little bit more, but 
I believe in two and a half, three hours, they will be, if you touch them, they'll probably bite apart. I'll tell you what, this already, I wish you guys could smell it. I just do. This is one of the best little old dishes ever was. And the meat's cheaper because it's uh, that round steak because where it's tough. But now, honey, it's not tough and it spends two and a half, three hours out of oven and all this goodness. And uh, I'm not going to cover it up. You can, you can cover it up if you want to, but I'm not going to. That way I can poke around and plunder in it as, a, <laughs> as I'm checking on it. <laughs> uh, I got a pan of bread in here I got to see about. Good Lord, I got to get it out of here first before I can even get that in there. Let me get it out and set it up here somewhere. Oh, Lord of mercy. Yeah, that, piece, that pan of bread is lop lopsided. Gonna have to have a helping hand. That stuff's heavy. Uh, losing all the heat out of it. Look at that, guys. I mean, you can tell that that's just gonna be unbelievable. I mean, it just is. All that meat and that sauce and the mushrooms, and it gets thick where the the meat was rolled in that flour. And if it does not, when it comes out, if it's not thick enough to suit you, you uh, get your meat out and a uh, slotted spoon or something, get the worst of everything out. Set it up on that stove and add you a little bit of flour and let it thicken up for you. It don't take but a few minutes because it's already boiling hot. All right then, we'll be back. Thank you. All right guys, let's get this Swiss steak out of this oven. It's done. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I can't say a thing. It rousted up my glasses. Uh, should look at that. Lamp sex life. Now, if you do not want that great sound there, I'm going to show you a little trick that you can do. But now, myself personally, that's just good flavor ready to stir up. But here's what you can do if you don't want it. Get you some paper towels and just lay it right in there and it will absorb it. Just the grease. It'll pull that grease right out of there. You can see it pulling it. See it? It'll take it right off your dish. Push around with just a little bit and let it finish absorbing that. Yeah, and that helped it quite a bit, and that's more than a plenty of. And I'm going to show you here. Plate. Look at that. Woo, Lordy. See them big old beautiful pieces of meat down in there? Let's get some of this on the plate. Now, this is my version of Swiss steak, God. It's untailing the versions. It's out. Uh -oh. I only need one piece of meat. But, uh, untailing the versions that are out there. This one's mine. And we got some peas over here. I love corn too, so I don't need to get greedy. And we've got some uh, potatoes. Let me grab them out of this oven. And uh, put some on that plate. Find me a big old spoon. Well, this is right here is corn spoon. 
some in potatoes out there. What's that? That's why I quit with peas because I was uh, getting too much. Well, you can get me a different piece of cornbread. I'll get that piece right there. And this is our um, Swiss steak. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. I sure enjoyed making it, and I'm sure going to enjoy the dinner, too. And I appreciate you guys and everything that you do. And until next time.